All right, guys, we have the screen set up. We're ready to get our ink and load it into our screen to print. We're using Plastisol inks. Plastisol inks must be cured at 320 to 330 degrees Fahrenheit. They never air dry. They also do not dissolve with water, so we need a special solvent, TS305, to clean it. And we also need hand cleaner to clean our hands when we get ink on our hands. You will get ink on your hands from this process. So I'm going to go to the ink cabinet and grab the color ink I want. So I'm going to grab purple, and I'm going to get an ink knife from our tool board, okay? And I want to walk over to the screen. Now, I got some newspaper laid out. Newspaper's next to our yellow flammable cabinet. I want to take the lid off of the ink, put it on my newspaper, okay? Bring your container to the screen. I've lowered the screen. Don't keep your screen up here. Lower it, okay? Take your ink knife, okay? I like to call it the spaghetti twirl. If I twirl my ink, I should be able to control it like that, okay? And spread it out like peanut butter, like you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, spreading the peanut butter on the bread, okay? Nice and flat with the ink knife. Don't poke your screen with the ink knife. It is metal. It will poke a hole in your screen. So nice, even spread. You can go bottom of your image or the top, wherever you have room, okay? I have plenty of room at the bottom in this case, so I'm just gonna put it at the bottom, okay? I scrape the ink knife off, keep, my, keep the handle clean, okay? And then I rest my ink knife on the lid so the handle remains clean. Do not dunk the ink knife into the ink. It will be a hot mess because it's, start, it's gonna be like quicksand. The thing gets gobbled up and there's ink all over the handle. Now our hand cleaner is over at the sink. This is our hand cleaner. Image Star Ultimate Hand Cleaner. It smells delightful. A little dab will do. You squeeze a little bit on your hand. The key is your hand needs to be dry. Okay? So on your dry hands, rub that stuff in. Okay? Now I have some ink from that inkjet printer that I had to reload on my hands and that stuff is strong so I don't know if that black is going to come off my hands right now but I'm rubbing that in there's a little bit of pumice in there and Mr. Domiak loves on loves teaching kids how to clean their hands so he's going to really like this this section of the video all right then I'm going to just rinse my hands off with water and dry it and we'll be good to go okay or I can just leave it like this and it kind of works. You want to grab a squeegee. Alright, I got to get a squeegee wide enough to cover my stencil. That's our goal. Okay, so the squeegee is a wooden handle with the synthetic blade. The blade has a nice sharp edge on it to push the anchor shear through the stencil. Okay, so key here is, is my squeegee wide enough to cover my stencil? And you can see I got at least an inch on the left and right, so that's a good size squeegee to use for this design. Tuck it under the black knobs of the screen press so that it will not fall forward. A lot of kids just put it like this, okay, they're kind of straight up. And then when they come up here, they lower the screen and bang, this thing falls forward into their ink. So make sure after you're done printing, you always tuck it at a little bit of an angle under the knobs, and then it'll, it'll be safe, okay? All right, now, you might want to get a couple test prints and bring it over. I'm just going to go grab a couple. And I'm ready to print. I can print on the one where we drew the lines. That's no problem. So we're going to lower the screen. Now, the photo stencil is very durable and strong. We did not print this way that we're going to demonstrate to you on the paper stencil. But we're going to do what's called a flood stroke. So normally the flood stroke happens in this direction, but I don't have ink there yet. So I'm going to flood pulling the squeegee towards me. But notice that the screen is up off the platen. So what I've done is I've just loaded that stencil up with ink. Okay, so you can see it underneath where the, the, the mesh was yellow. Now the mesh is filled with the ink color, in this case purple. Yes, yeah, only flood once, okay? 
Now I'm going to lower the screen and I'm ready to print. I'm going to keep the squeegee at about, I, I say, a 60 to 70 degree angle. Press down firmly and we're trying to get the print solid in one pass. Okay? I'm going to lift the screen up and now here's where my flood stroke happens. I'm going to just flood the ink back into the stencil, rest the squeegee, and there's our print. Okay? Now, I'm going to take this one off, run it through our dryer. Remember, the plastisol ink never air dries. It has to reach 320 Fahrenheit to cure. So you can just let that go through the dryer, and we'll take another test print and load up. Okay? So again, we'll take a clean test print, and we'll try to get the screen to print well in one pass, okay? Again, that looks that looks pretty good, all right? So you've got nice solid coverage on my type. My image looks good. This looks like a posterization image. It's not a grayscale, so it's uh, got a few dots in there, but it looks pretty good, okay? Now I'm going to show you something that may happen, and you know this from, from the from the uh, paper stencil. If I print, and maybe I'm just going to try to you know print this lightly. If I print it and I lift the screen up, you know it's kind of light, right? That happens a lot to novice screen printers. I'm just going to bring the screen down again. I have a registration system that allows the screen to come down in the exact same position. So you don't want to take your shirt off at this. At this point, you want to make sure you have a good print. So I'm going to bring the screen down and print it a second time. Your goal would be to print a quality print with no more than two passes. Because the more you print, the more chance you're going to have of messing something up. Okay? Alright, so we look good. Now we're ready to do the t-shirt. Would you like to put your t-shirts on your computer? Okay, because that's a relatively clean spot. It should be clean. So you'll ask your teacher for the size shirt you want. We give you one white shirt. And again, you may be bringing shirts in. That's your prerogative. So we're going to take the shirt. Now this is an XL. We centered our image on the platen. So we want to get an image that is centered on our T-shirt. So we have to load the shirt up centered and straight. Now this, yeah, this is tough because it's it's the first, maybe your second time you printed a shirt with the paper stencil, and this is an XL, so this is going to be the most difficult because it's got a lot of fabric hanging off. I look at the sleeve hems, okay? Are they hanging off of the edge of the platen the same distance? That's how I gauge it. So I just I visualize it. Some kids will get a ruler out and measure it. I don't think you have to get that precise, but as long as you can visualize that sleeve hem and the platen as the same distance, you're good, okay? Now the other issue is, as I pull the shirt up towards me, the image is getting further away from the collars, their collar. I like to go three to four fingers to the, from, the, from the collar to the top of my image. So the way to check that, squat down from the side and look at your stencil. I'm bringing it down, but I'm not letting the screen touch the shirt, okay? Um, and the, the top of the hair is about there, okay? This is kind of a different design because the type is not really centered. It's kind of off to the side. So maybe I just want to lower it a little bit so I'll pull the shirt towards me a touch, okay? If I wanted to get it closer to the collar, I would pull the shirt up more, okay? So I'm centered. I'm at the height that I want. Now I can flatten the shirt out with my hand so that it doesn't move. The platens on the t-shirt presses have some glue on there. Okay? If you're at, if you don't if your platen doesn't feel tacky, ask your teacher and they'll um, add some t-shirt adhesive to it so the shirt does not move. That 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 is a must for a quality print. Alright, so now we're ready to print. I'm just going to lower the screen. It's already flooded. Again, handle the screen out here. You notice that um, I like to handle the screen out here because you're not going to have ink on there. All right. Sometimes if you're new printing, you might have ink up here, you know, from the printing process because you're not used to containing the ink. 
but handle the screen here on the corners and there's less likelihood of you getting ink on your hands. Your hands must remain clean and your squeegee you must remain clean during the printing process. So I'm going to print, lift the screen, okay, flood, and there's my t-shirt, okay. So again, I have an image that is centered, it's straight on my t-shirt, I've loaded my t-shirt up centered, that should yield and produce a quality design. So I'm going to lift the shirt under the collar and under the tail of the shirt, let it free up from the glue. See, I just let it pop, I pop and drop is what I call it. Pop and let it drop. I'm going to grab it up by the shoulder hems, keep it flat as I bring it over to the t-shirt dryer. And this is where the curing happens. Okay. And again, your hands should be clean at this point if for some reason they're not. Maybe you have a friend in class you want to say, hey, can you go grab my t-shirt and put it on my computer? Um, or you can just let it drop in the bin and then go wash your hands and pick it up. So that is how you, you produce and print a quality t-shirt.